Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi, John. Good morning. Good morning. Abhijit, good morning. Hi. Happy birthday to you. Thank you very much. Great to see you. Yes. Good morning, sir. Happy birthday. Morning. Thank you very much. No, no, it is all the people over here. They have put a lot of effort. So, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Wish you many, many happy returns of the day. Happy birthday. Thank you. Then, sir, good morning. Ah, good morning, Pranav. How are you? Fine, sir. Good. Good. Good to see you. Thank you, sir. Same to you. Abhijit, yep. I have, I have posted that campus thing on the blog today. Oh, you have? Okay, I'll see that. Yeah, it's very nicely written. <laughs> okay. Is it already there on the blog? Let's see. Okay. Uh -huh. Ceremony and the teaching and the parivilla. Next cake ceremony and the other. I'm going to go down the second parivilla. Mrs. John has baked a beautiful cake for Dr. John. And the parvum thing, but I'm going to go down the second. It hasn't come yet. No, no. It has come. I just checked. It's there. Is there a screen capture? Which one is there? Just a moment. 
मिलेंगे तो नहीं मिलेंगे मुझे मिस्टर से मिला I'll check it on my other email because you send normally it comes at two places. Yeah, okay. It has not come in the WhatsApp. No, no, I have not. I have not sent the link. But if oh, you, okay. Uh, oh, I, I am sending it right now. Okay, okay. Oh yeah, it has come now. Yeah.
Where are you meeting Alfonso? I think they are in the committee room. Is it the new building? New building, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and I think others will join from their offices or homes. Yeah, yeah, okay. <clears throat> Hi, Minu. Good morning. Hi, good morning. How are you? <laughs> good. How are you? <laughs> uh, fine, fine. <laughs> So all the good wishes to you as well. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> One year since we met, isn't it? Last yes, February. Yes. Correct. Yes. <laughs> Long time. <laughs> Hi, Thomas. Good morning. Hello. How are you? How are you? Good, good. Great to see you. Seeing you after a long, long time. Exactly. Yeah, it's really good to see you. Yeah. How's the How's the family doing? Oh, they're all fine. Thank you. How's your family? Yeah, well. Well. Um, Pune is sort of in a in a not not such a pretty state, but everything's yes. okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hi, Biju. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Chakang. Good evening. Many, <laughs> many happy returns. Good morning. Thanks. <clears throat> oh, 
How is the COVID situation in Ahmedabad? Getting getting bad now. Yeah. Oh. Increasing by leaps and bounds. Yeah, Gujarat was 1100 something cases yesterday. Mm. Ahmedabad was also 240 odd. Yeah. <clears throat> Kerala is in bad shape, right? At least from the news, it appears to be so. Kerala is uh, okay, recovering, recovering. Okay. Uh, some some pockets are bad, but our town is is quite good. Mm. <clears throat> Maharaj has gone back to the old attendance things gradually. Right. I see. Yeah, Just right. yesterday, DA sent out an order for all DA units in Maharaj. Hmm. Only group A and B gazetted people will attend 100%, others are down to 50% attendance. Good morning, everybody. We have got some minutes left to start the celebration today. Guests are joining the celebration one by one. So by exactly at 10 o'clock, we will start the the celebration. So will you control the microphones from there? Will you meet, mute all of them when the thing starts? Yes. yes. All the microphones except for the speaker will be on. And uh, if anybody is interested to ask anything, they may raise your hands. So we will look at uh, looking at the time as well as the program as it uh, begins. We will give them an opportunity to speak. As the number of partic participants are very limited, uh, it's only uh, this room that has been given the access to speak. Otherwise, the entire uh, IPR and all the other guests are uh, only able to view this through the YouTube uh, link that we have sent them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> 
relatives are also joining they are also viewing this entire program okay i will send them the youtube link okay <clears throat> youtube because link I, i will be mentioning about them that your near and dear ones are also listening to us yeah yeah <clears throat> hello amit hello your relatives are also joining they are also moving this and okay, i send them the youtube link i will be mentioning about them that you are here and you are welcome hello uh, good morning brother john good morning sir how are you nice to see you <laughs> ashish jang how are you good morning sir all fine <clears throat> i just get back i just uh, i put on my video and uh, just get get back soon i think we have about 5 minutes <coughs> hello atre hello morning gunjan good morning sir happy birthday to you thank you atre to sab the day okay hi atre good morning good morning sir good morning oh katta adche glasses so we will be having a mixed language that is hindi cum english i hope everybody can understand that hindi लाइट में लाइट 
प्रोफेसर जॉन नाम सुनते ही एक प्रतिभावान देशमा पितामह जैसी व्यक्ति की छवि नजर के सामने आती है प्रोफेसर जॉन ने प्लाज्मा बेस्ड टेक्नोलॉजी के विकास की नींव रखी और आज उसके फलस्वरूप कई औद्योगिक एकम इस बेहतरीन साइंस साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी का औद्योगिक और सामाजिक फायदे के लिए उपयोग कर रहे हैं इस महानुभाव के अस्सीवे जन्मदिन पर आई उसके इस योगदान की सराहना करते हुए उसका जन्मदिन मना रहे हैं इस मौके पर ये कार्यक्रम में सहभागी होने के लिए मैं छाया चावड़ा और मेरी सहकर्मी अल्फोंसो जोसेफ पद्मश्री पी आई जोन आमंत्रित मित्रगण सहकर्मी और मेहमानों को आमंत्रित करते हुए इस सफर में ले चलते हैं आगे की कार्यवाही के लिए मैं अल्फोंसो को आमंत्रित करती हूँ अल्फोंसो थैंक यू छाया गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल आई वेलकम एवरीबडी स्पेशली प्रोफेसर जॉन अलॉन्ग विथ इज नियर एंड डियर वन आई टेक दिस प्रिविलेज टू थैंक यू सर for accepting our invitation and being present here remotely we would have loved to invite you personally and celebrate this joyous occasion had this current pandemic not being present so today we have all been gathered together to celebrate your well lived well loved golden years full of energy achievements commitments contributions and happiness your wisdom experience insight authenticity are inspiring we offer you our gratitude and our loving best wishes today we have prepared a small program for you where several scientists friends and students would speak on your contributions and express their wishes by mode of presentations and audio clips before you we will now begin up this session by first having a talk from our director but before inviting our director professor shashank chaturvedi i would like to introduce him professor shashank chaturvedi joined ipr as the director on august 2016 he has obtained his phd from princeton university in 1989 some of the honors conferred on him are institute silver medal at iit delhi Homi Baba Science and Technology Award of TA, Group Achievement Award of TA, and also he is a fellow of the Indian National Academy of Engineering. To begin the celebration, I now invite our director, Professor Sushant Chaturvedi, to grace this occasion with his address. Sushant sir. Thank you, Alphonse. It's a privilege and a pleasure to get the opportunity to speak here. Professor John is in many ways. the pioneer in the area of plasma applications in india apart from his many contributions many of which you'll be hearing about today he conceptualized initiated and nurtured the facilitation center for industrial plasma technologies that's fci pt at ipr so satellite applications of plasmas are now seen as a very important in areas covering so diverse as industrial applications agriculture waste disposal medical and health applications space defense aerospace and so on and fcipt which professor john created and which has already made so many contributions has now a major role to play in our nirbhay bharat as you know it now forms the core of the ipr technology incubator there's one thing we'd like to i'd like to point out at the time the plasma processing group was started in ipr which then led to fcipt it was done in a small way that is always the case with new activities once an activity becomes successful with hindsight we tend to think that its importance and need must have been obvious from the beginning but that is rarely the case it takes a lot of convincing and a lot of effort to get others to believe in the importance of a new activity i am sure that professor john when he tells us about those early days will also share not only the successes but also the uncertainties and the worries that he went through such stories are very important they act as an inspiration for people trying to start new programs The biggest compliment we can pay to a pioneer like Professor John is to continue and to expand the work that he initiated. This is what FCIPT in particular 
and IPR in general is now trying to do. All of us wish Professor John the best for his 80th birthday and look forward to his continued guidance and advice in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Professor Zukhraidi ke is waktabe ke baad, humare agle wakta hai Professor Desh Pande. Nagpur University se snatak honi ke baad, Professor Desh Pande, Purvi Director and Professor Kao ke netritu mein, PhD ke liye PRL mein, Plasma Physics Group mein shamil huye. Dr. De Professor Desh Pande hai in 1993 mein, फैकल्टी के स्वरूप में आईपीआर से अपने व्यवसायिक जीवन की शुरुआत की उन्होंने 1995 से 2006 तक डिजाइन ऑफ डॉक्यूमेंट 2006 से 2007 तक फ्यूजन ब्लैंकेट डिजाइन और 2007 से 2019 तक प्रोजेक्ट डायरेक्टर फॉर आईपीआर इंटर इंडिया के रूप में आईपीआर में सेवा प्रदान की प्रोफेसर देश पांडे अभी आईपीआर में प्रशासनीय डीन के डीन और फ्यूजन इंटर डिसिप्लिनरी साइंस डिवीजन के विभागीय प्रमुख के रूप में सेवा प्रदान कर रहे हैं प्रोफेसर देश पांडे प्रोफेसर जोन के साथ इटर इंडिया प्रोजेक्ट की शुरुआत के दौर में सहयोगी रह चुके मैं प्रोफेसर देश पांडे को प्रोफेसर जोन कंट्रीब्यूशन टू इंडियन टॉकमेट एंड फ्यूजन प्रोग्राम के विषय पर अपना वक्तव्य रजू करने के लिए आमंत्रित करती हूँ प्रोफेसर देश पांडे थैंक यू छाया गुड मॉर्निंग प्रोफेसर जोन इट्स ऑलवेज ए प्लेजर टू टॉक टू यू आई एल जस्ट टेक ए क्विक जर्नी into the tokamak and fusion and all that but uh, uh, behind all this uh, <clears throat> activities uh, a little tribute to the creative restlessness uh, so uh, i'm sure a number of people uh, know uh, about your work and it's awesome of course but uh, what is most endearing is the the out of box uh, and rebellious creative creativity you know that sort of uh, uh, echoed throughout the uh, years so for the young and ready to be inspired in 1975 uh, physical research laboratory was the destination uh, he chose a few years earlier uh, when he moved from malabar and uh, <clears throat> this was a place where there was astrophysics astronomy planetary uh, atmospheres uh, geocosmology paleobotany uh, and a number of other things other than plasmas and so i think the lab plasma and the astrophysics group uh, where uh, this whole thing started professor john carried his fascination with the uh, pulse forming networks uh, with the with the marks generators and so on and in fact uh, we can now see almost uh, 25 plus 20 45 years ago uh, he talked about an article on tokamak fusion that he wrote uh, the the early days of uh, prototype mars generator were aluminum sheets and insulators uh, corners insulated in oil and uh, some people recall uh, dr homi sekna's visit there the full scale marks uh, came uh, with another idea and insulator molds and araldite their deaeration in a in a vacuum chamber and lots of air bubbles and fun uh, the home made current transformers because the other guys uh, the the ones who were selling it were quite expensive using ac auto transformers uh the bostic guns and the washer guns uh, and interestingly the washer guns are even today we can see interaction of the plasmas with microwaves there are experiments even today in ipr um uh, the the washer guns also bring uh, a memory of the uh, space plasma interactions uh, but i'll come to that a moment later so during the late 70s uh, with the oscilloscopes being expensive uh some adjustments were done and uh, you can see the the ability to circumvent the problem and uh, and the fascination uh, of professor john to start a, a summer school program uh, in plasma physics while doing all this fun <clears throat> so actually <clears throat> so in the early days uh, in order to work on toroidal plasmas uh, some basic experiments uh, 
on the toroidal assembly where begun. And this was the famous beta device uh, in which uh, Professor John continued to do uh, experiments which were done on relativistic electron beam injection in linear devices. They were continued on the on the toroidal devices. These experiments, uh, uh, the linear ones were done with uh, Dr. Vijay Shankar and uh, Dr. K. K. Jain, whereas the beta device uh, was uh, 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 Dr. Channa Reddy's device for PhD. And these uh, beams are short pulses of the order of nanoseconds, but the beams once injected live for close to 100 times their uh, their original uh, injection time, which is of the order of microseconds, and producing a whole lot of effects, waves and instabilities in the plasmas. Uh, but of course, this all required uh, uh, the generators, the capacitor, inductor discharges, and I think the the story with the uh, pulsed power continued there. <clears throat> In 1982, uh, this team in PPP, the plasma physics program in PRL, was considering a giant challenge at that time in 1982, which is the Aditya Tokamak. And they were looking for everything, including design and the leader to lead. So there must have been many pre-project activities. Uh, and Aditya then brought a new, uh, new beast on the campus, uh, the large magnets the high volume UHV systems, uh, some, uh, you know, you can say unforgiving in terms of demanding cleanliness, uh, the heating and diagnostics, uh, the heating uh, HV power supplies and so on. And Professor John was in charge of uh, the assembly and commissioning. There were uh, mid-course obstacles during testing <clears throat> and uh, so Aditya must have been, this is it. This. So the Aditya power supply systems are, uh, the, this, this whole package was led by Professor John. And uh, it has uh, a, a big uh, a thing behind it because if you want to draw a large power, uh, you don't have, uh, large flywheel generators, etc., like others have. And you can see some very interesting write-ups of Professor John in his blog. So uh, the whole idea was to pulse the grid. And then there were negotiations. Uh, and uh, since they did not have the method of measuring pulse power for short durations, uh, a whole thing had to be set up here. So there was a line drawn from runners and the 132 kV brought down to 11 kV, and then it was eventually converted to DC power supplies for the toroidal field systems, ohmic systems, uh, vertical field systems, and the feedback power supplies. So <clears throat> uh, this is uh, the famous transformer which had failed uh, and required another, uh, you know, burst of creativity. Uh, to create a capacitor bank uh, to continue the uh, arrival of the first plasma on time. And these large uh, voltages have to be shaped. So there is a whole control system uh, called APPS, uh, which drives the voltage to say around 25 volts across the plasma for the breakdown and then slowly uh, comes down to about a volt or so to keep the plasma going. So this require an extraordinary uh, three slope shaping and a circuitry and a control. And all of that had to be accomplished on time and with uh, various difficulties, attendant difficulties. So these are some of the challenging parameters. Uh, you know, we have almost a million amperes per second kind of current required. And therefore, at 10 millihenries, the kind of voltages induced, uh, including the, the stray capacitances, required uh, specific and uh, not only just detailed engineering, but a lot of experiencing before everything 
started working. So I still remember in 1989 the International Plasma Conference in Delhi. Professor Kao hurrying in to find out and meeting Dr. Channa Reddy. So did we measure it correctly? And so Channa said yes. So the plasma current measurements uh, and and the November 1989 is a very nice uh, powerful memory. These are some of the photographs of the infrastructure that developed during these systems, the converters and the entry transformers. <coughs> this was the first primary ignition loop voltage, 1988, and the historical waveform. And uh, in the early days, uh, I think uh, close to something like 4,000 or so shots, they were all due to the capacitor bank uh, arrangements made until the transformer uh, repaired. And uh, while doing all uh, before this, the, the assembly of Aditya also itself presented a challenge because uh, you have stainless steel, large structures, everything has to fit together. And I still remember the difficulties uh, trying to fit all the octagons and all the bolts together. <clears throat> so this is a quick look at the at the rate actually the current changes to induce the voltage in the in the plasma and actually producing the discharge. And here you can see design of a multi-stage capacitor bank to circumvent the absence of a transformer. So in the initial days, uh, this is a shot uh, of, uh, I mean, you can see the number 519, which must be very early days. And the times of the order of few to few tens of milliseconds, those early discharges in the, in the plasma and the Aditya, everything was getting used to each other. And then uh, with that in mind, the creative uh, scientist within Professor John wrote this very interesting poem on how the electron avalanche takes place. And I'm sure you will enjoy this poem. It's available. Uh, no. <clears throat> in the SST one, uh, there was guidance and brainstorming in the design stage in 1993 itself. We joined ITER in 1995 but there were a number of discussions and uh, Professor John's legendary skills in uh, avoiding the confusing discussion uh, are known already. So whenever the discussion sort of wandered, Professor John would step in ruthlessly and drive the discussion to a conclusion. So in the ITER days, there were internal preparations, uh, preparation of the ITER team who would visit us and evaluate negotiations how to finalize the packages, setting up of the domestic agency and representation at the ITER management bodies, MAC and the ITER council. And around the same time when uh, <clears throat> John Jack uh, was visiting us, uh, creation of a framework uh, for R&D with universities called the National Fusion Program, upon which uh, uh, the, there will be a talk, uh, I think, by Ravi. Here is a page from the diary in 2003. Uh, it's an inter participation proposal meeting, and uh, one is asking these questions: uh, How are we, how are we going to meet this? The specifications? How are we going to manage this in time? What components we should have, and you know, what should we look at? And then uh, at the end, you can see to prepare a, a coherent proposal, uh, a guidance for getting everything together in a, in a certain way, because different people would write different things in different way. So uh, just then uh, shortly afterwards, there was an interview uh, with uh, the then ITER director, Shimo Mura. And uh, you can see this is also available on the web and a very interesting uh, penetrating questions by Professor John there uh, and 
particularly Shimomura's uh, answer, you will see that one of the problem challenges that he saw with the long term projects was there was uh, a risk of losing the leveraging. People were leaving, and therefore, a program of this kind requires a continuity. <clears throat> Here is a, is a page on which uh, someone else is going to speak, but this document was the one which was prepared and then this program became very successful. Uh, again, uh, conceived and shaped by Professor John. <clears throat> so I gratefully acknowledge various uh, references here. Presentations by Dr. Saxena, H.B. Bhatt, Balakrishnan, Discussions with Patak, Vijay Shankar, Chennara, D. Professor John's personal blog. And uh, thank you very much uh, for this again, once again, an opportunity. And uh, I wish Professor John uh, a, a great birthday. Good birthdays are good for you, Professor John, because statistics shows that the more birthdays one has, one lives longer. And so thank you again. <coughs> For this informative talk, taking us through the journey, all that has happened in IBA. Now we have a presentation by Dr. S. K. Nema. He's currently the head of atmospheric plasma division called APD in IPA. Dr. S. K. Nema joined IPR in 1993. He has done his PhD in polymers and a light field and has been developing plasma based technologies for societal benefits. Dr. S. K. Nema has been conferred the Nazi Reliance Industries Platinum Jubilee Award in 2010 for application oriented innovations in physical sciences. And he is one of the eminent scientists who has been involved in the successful mission of the invention of the plasma pyrolysis system. We all know that the center named FCIPD at Gandhi Nagar was founded by our dear Professor P. I. John. And Dr. S. K. Nema is one of the few who was associated with Professor John since the inception of the center. And now I invite Dr. S. K. Nema to speak on Professor John's contribution to the development of plasma based technologies. Dr. Nema. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, uh, happy birthday, Professor John. Uh, so uh, I thank uh, committee. Uh, for giving me this opportunity to talk on Professor John's contribution to plasmas, plasma technologies developed at FCAPT. And uh, you can see uh, my association with him is from uh, 1993 March. I joined IPR on 4th March. And uh, uh, he was he a was, uh, project leader of plasma processing group that time. So my first meeting was with him was unforgettable. And uh, the moment I entered his office, I saw a person with typical scientist look, gray beard with spectacles. And uh, then he told me to sit. Uh, after a little pause, he explained me about the potential applications of plasma and gave me a red booklet on plasma processing and its applications. During the discussion, um, he was a little worried and he uh, told me that the researchers, they are very good in conducting uh, experiments at lab scale. However, when it comes to deliver or demonstrate at a larger scale, it becomes challenging. So uh, I was given first assignment of to deposit uh, this uh, plasma polymer coatings. And um, I, th that time Dr. Gadis Prasad was there. He was working as a postdoc. So myself and Dr. Gadis Prasad, we had uh, initiated this project of plasma polymerization of hexamethyl diacyloxane. And um, I, uh, his contributions are quite significant in various technologies, and uh, I'll be uh, I'll be covering some of them uh, in my presentation. So this was the first technology, plasma nitriding technology, where I saw. He uh, and uh, Dr. Ganguly, Mahesh Tanwani, and Saju Jos were working to develop this system. And um, 
this plasma nitriding is basically surface hardening process which enhances the life of these steel components uh, two to three times and uh, overall it improves the service life of these uh, components and uh, the important part is that conventionally cyanide baths are used and uh, ammonia uh, ammonia nitriding is done so both are quite polluting technology and sometimes uh, this cyanide bath do not provide very uniform thickness of the hardness and therefore uh, this plasma technology where you are using only nitrogen and hydrogen it is environment friendly so this technology was the first one which uh, has uh, developed at fcpd and it was first transferred to this indian plasma system limited max bobby was there and our uh, experience with uh, these people was little uh, was not very good because uh, we were uh, first time this technology transfer has happened from our institute and then uh, the, this technology was given to metal treat mr wassel was there uh, and uh, this, uh, uh, they, he was using this plasma nitriding technology to uh, already he was having conventional technologies but then he has switched over to this plasma based one and uh, then this technology was given afterwards to Ms. mr messrs millman Th thin film private limited pune and a uh, few systems were installed at uh, with their help in at igtr ahmedabad and central tool room ludhiana and uh, this uh, they are doing very well ludhiana central tool room ludhiana is doing extremely well there so uh, of course a lot of work was uh, afterwards uh, taken uh, taken uh, over by alfonso joseph and um, dr mukherjee and uh, they have taken uh, taken the technology to a different level and apart from this thing various other things new developments are also going on which i'll discuss afterwards so these patents professor john has around five patents uh, in this plasma nitriding technology process and different devices which itself reflect his contribution uh, in this plasma nitriding technology so you can see this uh, big components like guide vanes uh, national hydraulic power corporation was there they wanted to do nitriding on uh, this big size guide vanes here so this uh, and uh, in this this is another component uh, where alfonso is here so uh, this uh, big system about 1 meter uh, diameter and 2 meter height means you can keep one system on the other and uh, you can nitrate components of about up to 1.5 to 1.8 meter height components uh, in this system so this came during his tenure and again uh, you can see uh, uh, this was quite successful and a lot of job work was going on job work is done at fcbt this is a uh, dissociation of zircon sand using thermal plasma. This was another technology. Uh, th this uh, during uh, just after my joining, this was started because Mr. C S Zircon Product Limited. They had approached us and uh, conventionally zircon silicate ZrSiO4 is the is uh, converted into ZrO2 by chemical methods and multiple uh, large number of chemicals are involved and multiple steps are used to be there but with the thermal plasma in a single step you have to introduce this uh, zircon powder in a uh, in a plasma plume and then uh, it is uh, dissociated into ZrO2 and SiO2 so this was done this was demonstrated demonstrated successfully and uh, one patent is there professor john's patent on uh, this process for producing ZRO2 from zircon sand. So this was uh, another uh, technology where, uh, of course, uh, uh, this was uh, in his tenure when he was a project leader. This uh, lot of development have taken place, and uh, you can see these are the silicon oxide coated components. And uh, conventionally, people are using lacquer-based technologies. It is uh, quite polluting and I've uh, seen in Moradabad, uh, people who are using, uh, the, the, they're doing this lacquer based things. The workers used to, uh, they used to feel dizziness after, uh, after one to two hours time. And uh, this plasma technology where we are depositing, using RF radio frequency plasma and uh, HMDSO 
was introduced in the system where the silicon oxide uh, glass like coating was deposited so the first time this was done at uh, the ppg which is uh, there behind the uh, aditya lab so professor john was very excited to see the colorful multiple multiple colors were there on these uh, different brass articles and uh, then uh, this was uh, afterwards also done the coating was done on these headlight reflectors which we are getting it from jaipur so this coating uh, this system uh, here this was uh, we was developed here through dst funding and this was also commissioned at uh, mhsc moradabad metal handicraft service center moradabad so here you can see again uh, patents uh, where professor john is uh, is there and it shows his contribution in uh, different technologies at uh, fcbt so this was very important initiatives uh, taken by him uh, this plasma pyrolysis activity where uh, professor john and i had prepared a uh, proposal this was uh, uh, this was submitted to tifec and D uh, tifec dst but after the visit of professor ramurthy only this money came and uh, this activity was started at uh, old at a uh, rented building at fcpt uh, gandhinagar where uh, myself and uh, one kalpesh modi was there we were using graphite arc initially to start then later on it was shifted uh, to nitrogen plasma torch and dr gp was given uh, was made the in charge of this thing then uh, after uh, about one one and a half year when we we have found that uh, there were issues with the nitrogen plasma torch the, the finally again we switched over to graphite based system and uh, this uh, using graphite based uh, arc system with uh, automatic uh, feeding of the electrodes we could successful successfully demonstrate this technology and mrs bhagwati uh, has taken this technology uh, this technology was transferred to him and uh, we earned about 50 lakh rupees from that technology transfer it was non exclusive technology transfer for about 5 to 6 5 uh, years and uh, then uh, the evolution of this has taken place multiple uh, systems we have made and then uh, this uh, from the dst funding we have commissioned 11 systems in the country to demonstrate this technology and later on um, this uh, we i was demonstrated this plasma technology to cpcb officials and about uh, it has taken very long time to get approval from cpcb and now this technology has been included in the gadget of india ministry of uh, environment and forest and uh, now we are uh, going to develop one 5 tpd system uh, this is going to be commissioned at uh, homi bhaba cancer hospital varanasi Uh, in uh, about one and a half year time, one and a half year to two two years time, and uh, we are also contributing. Uh, we are co collaborating in twenty five TPD system, uh, MSW gasification system, uh, and which we are planning to develop along with BARC. So you can see here plasma to uh, torch. Uh, this is a nitrogen torch. This is graphite arc based torch. and this was the first system which we had developed uh, and uh, this was the schematic of that and uh, you can see here uh, the system which we had demonstrated to cpcb officials at uh, bhagwati pyrotech limited and in this picture you can see this technology transfer has taken place uh, and professor kao professor john and all this team is there and uh, after that we have also transferred to four indian industries on non exclusive basis for uh, uh, for msw as well as for biomedical waste and uh, again you can see uh, here the patents of professor john uh, we had uh, just uh, one day discussing on this uh, plasma technology the time uh, professor john had given the idea that can we use the gases which are generated in the system can we use it back and uh, you can uh, try to to enhance the plume and uh, you can also uh, do the convective heat transfer in the system 
So based on that idea, we had uh, developed the system and uh, the, this demonstration was done and it was working perfectly all right. So this patent is there uh, at a plasma pyrolysis system using novel endogenous gas. And uh, another patent was the, the bootstrap plasma pyrolysis system. And um, you can see here uh, uh, in one of the project uh, to evaluate this uh, uh, waste disposal for industrial waste using thermal plasma technology. One project, the MOEF had given to one enclosure based party. So last year, Professor John, at the age of 79, he visited to enclosure and 10 hours to and fro journey through by road. It shows his keen interest and uh, enthusiasm for this plasma, uh, plasma technology, plasma science and technology. So this was another. Uh, uh, interesting story here for Teflon like coating where uh, we were worried uh, because uh, tetrafluoroethylene, which is, uh, is the precursor molecule that has to be used for the deposition of Teflon like coating, it was uh, I contacted Hindustan fluorocarbons, they refused that they cannot provide uh, this gas cylinder. So then uh, we were worried how to do this coating. So one day we were discussing uh, and uh, suddenly the Professor John came. He was uh, he was uh, he has given the, it's one very useful idea that can we use this Teflon tailings which comes out from the workshop, and uh, that idea clicked immediately. We have made a vessel where we have pyrolyzed this Teflon tailings, and we could generate tetrafluoroethylene and hexafluoropropene these gases, and this uh, technology was again patented, and we have used this technology to deposit uh, Teflon like coating using this uh, PCVD system. And uh, we also deposited this coating on two meter uh, 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 diameter sh shell, acid shell for Igcar Kalpakkam. You can see here the, this is the plasma, and uh, this is fluorine, fluorine plasma, tetrafluoroethylene plasma. And uh, here you can see in the deposition, this multiple peaks of uh, fluorine compound, different uh, species are there in the present in the polymer. And uh, th uh, this was here, uh, you can see this is another technology on uh, textile uh, pl uh, plasma surface modification of Angora wool. And uh, here uh, we had, I had initiated this work initially at IPR uh, to do this coating for Atira for on jute and other uh, cotton fabric. But uh, when one day Professor John came with uh, Professor uh, P.B. Jhala from NAD, uh, and uh, this was, uh, he had uh, first time, uh, he has shown this thing that Angora wool uh, is a pr problem uh, uh, because the, these Angora fibers are very smooth. These fibers are rabbit hairs and uh, they are quite warm, but because of slippery nature and uh, uh, these things, you cannot view with 100% Angora fiber uh, clothings. So we had uh, taken up this work and then you can see we could modify the surface, we could generate nano features in the plasma treated surface, uh, these Angora fibers. And uh, then afterwards, it was possible to view 100% Angora, Angora wool sweaters and clothings. And you can see the, here uh, the technology transfer has taken place with uh, Mesos Inspiron, where our uh, IPR team is there. And uh, this was the system, 1.5 meter wide and one, and about 4.5 meter long system, uh, Angora wool treatment system is there, dielectric barrier discharge uh, based system is there. So where uh, all, uh, including Professor Kao, Professor John, and director of uh, NAD, they're all there were the present. And uh, this system, three such systems are commissioned in the Himalayan region of uh, India and they are working. So this was uh, another su success story uh, in his uh, under his guidance. So this was another technology where uh, um, he uh, one day came with uh, one Mr. Mallikarjun from uh, Mr. Triton wall. And uh, these uh, walls are having uh, poor bonding problem. They were uh, generally chemical, a uh, lot of chemicals, cyanide based chemicals were used to modify the surface of brass walls. You, you know, you must have seen these brass walls in, tire, in tubes and other places. 
So the rubber to brass bonding should be extremely good, and whatever chemicals they were using, uh, the, a lot of pressure was there to the uh, on their head because government was uh, banning many of the polluting technologies. So they had approached us that can you use some of this plasma, some plasma technology, and can you uh, modify the surface? So this work was initiated that time, and they, from two walls per batch, we had gone up to six thousand three hundred walls per batch. And uh, this uh, system was uh, has been developed through DST funding, and this is commissioned at uh, Morad uh, Triton Wall uh, India Limited. Morad uh, is uh, in Mysore, and uh, this is uh, again uh, eco-friendly technology, and uh, it saves a lot of so about sixty-five thousand liters of water per day, and a lot of effluent uh, pro problems has been solved. So, of course, uh, other things are also going on there. uh their uh, rubber uh, rubber uh, was not having uniform sulfur distribution so that was uh, they are taking care of the, that part so finally i uh, this uh, the concluding remark that professor uh, john has made significant contribution to various plasma based technologies developed at fcpt we at fcpt are following the path he has shown to us we have taken the technologies to different level as well as develop different new technologies for industrial and societal benefits uh, in the recent past ap uh, atmospheric plasma division and plasma surface engineering division at fcpt have developed few novel technologies such as plasma activated water pencil plasma torch and killing of pathogens and cancerous cells further we are working on radical nitriding and uh, um, plasma carburizing techniques developing 5 tpd systems for biomedical waste disposal and also contributing in 25 tpd plasma gasification system and uh, here are the sheet memories uh, you can see uh, this is the fe felicitation of professor john at uh, plasma processing and uh, in indian in the industry meet 2006 then uh, this is book written by him plasma science creation of wealth is a very um, um, thought provoking book and uh, how the plasma technologies can be used to to generate wealth to create wealth so a lot of things are there and uh, here uh, this was uh, so one dst meeting at cambridge square hotel uh, where again this uh, different textile technology was was discussed and this was again uh, in this plasma technology for better tomorrow 2017 where professor john has uh, inaugurated this thing uh, this um, for, uh, uh, plasma technology for better tomorrow workshop and uh, this was again you know panel discussion is going on in the same in the same workshop thank you very much thank you nima ji डॉक्टर नेमा के इस माहितीप्रद वक्तव्य के बाद मैं डॉक्टर सामरान बाहेरी को प्रोफेसर जोन्स कंट्रीब्यूशन टू बेसिक साइंस इन द कंटेक्स्ट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन प्लाज्मा रिसर्च के बारे में अपना वक्तव्य रजू करने के लिए आमंत्रित कर रही हूँ डॉक्टर सामरान इस उपरते वैज्ञानिक ने अपना पी प्रोफेसर जोन के नेतृत्व में किया पी की पदवी प्राप्त करने के बाद डॉक्टर सामरान ने नॉन न्यूट्रल प्लाज्मा डिविजन के मुख्य संचालक के रूप में आई से ही अपना व्यवसायिक जीवन शुरू किया डॉक्टर पहेरी ने प्रोफेसर जोन के साथ नोवेल टोराइडल फॉर इलेक्ट्रॉन प्लाज्मा पर कार्य किया डॉक्टर पहेरी के डॉक्टोराइडल ट्रेप फॉर प्योर इलेक्ट्रॉन प्लाज्मा वैज्ञानिक संशोधन के कार्य को सम्मानित करते हुए उनको बूटी यंग साइंटिस्ट अवार्ड दिया गया उसके अलावा उनको आई टी ओ एच अवार्ड और डी एक्सलेंस अवार्ड से भी सम्मानित किया गया है हाल में डॉक्टर पहेरी बी आर सी विशाखापट्टनम में कॉम्पिटिशनल एनालिसिस डिविजन के मुख्य संचालक के रूप में अपनी सेवा प्रदान कर रहे हैं मैं डॉक्टर पहेरी को अपने वक्तव्य को रजू करने के लिए आमंत्रित कर रही हूँ डॉक्टर पहेरी डिवीजन के मुख्य संचालक के रूप में अपनी सेवा प्रदान कर रहे हैं मैं डॉक्टर पहरी को अपने वक्तव्य को रजू करने के लिए आमंत्रित कर रही हूँ
Okay. I think the uh, mic was mute, so I'm sorry. I'll have to restart. Division K. मुख्य संचालक के रूप में अपनी सेवा प्रदान कर रहे हैं मैं डॉक्टर पहरी को अपने वक्तव्य को रजू करने के लिए आमंत्रित कर रही हूँ to be present to restart and i feel Ladies very privileged as we celebrate here today professor john's 80th birthday very happy birthday professor john reminiscing about his work and times and other accomplishments audible now and especially reflecting on his immense contribution is a presentation scene is indeed a privilege actually so let us start as we celebrate the accomplishments of professor john so i'm sorry To be founder, and I feel very privileged. So come back and finish your research. We celebrate his contribution to the Indian Commission of Arithmetic. Very happy birthday, Professor John. And his entrepreneurial leap that he took later, reminiscing about his work and times, commercial as an accomplishment, not only on the other hand, and especially reflecting illustrious achievements as they are, is a basic foundation. Somewhere in between is indeed a privilege. Is actually quite. So let us finish the research. Personal achievements of Professor John. I'm sorry. To be founder, and involved in very important economic fusion research, and we celebrate his especially his actually for task the very first glance at the number of research students such as John, an entrepreneurial leap and he took later. He says, reminiscing about his work and time, commercial as an accomplishment, as well as on the other hand, kind of especially reflecting illustrious achievements as well as the sheer spectrum of his ambitions between. Is indeed he has been involved in his. Actually, while it was electron brain, electrons are involved in reactions and their to be found in propagation of plasma and other initiatives. Transcendent is actually the first electron plasma science of the number of research in between the studies on ion science to later. This is studies on non-nuclear plasma, commercial and other kinds of other stuff. The other even kind of people reflecting illustrious among all this respect for this one world between. Is indeed it is passionately is nurtured by the electron brain and it is pioneering the electron brain on reaction on the to plasma propagation and plasma propagation research and this got on to write the electron plasma and its journey from a modest hundred microns to a higher second confinement this is study that not to view plasma solution and also was a challenge even kind of reflecting illustrious among all the animation respect this non nuclear plasma violates its nationality Nurtured, electron brain, so it sends its light on the right direction. Then, on your to be present, it sends a very nice set of energy fields. And that kind of allows us to write the answer to the question of how many from a model of non-linear plasmas are defined. The first of non-linear plasmas actually started in the lab of physicist Michael Fukuyama, who was a scientist. He was trying to simplify the plasma cell in order to get something that like a fair to add the plasmas of plasmas. On the other hand, there were atomic physicists who were designing In the transition, it will send from a single particle to another single particle. Then, on your to be present, it sends a very nice set of energy fields. What was interesting about this class? That is, it does not have any superficial explanation. Now, further, not even in the field. You can find many such intensive and complex experiments of ever. In fact, this will actually be confined in gaps for days and months. Look at some universe about the thermal equilibrium of plasma. It presents such an enormous opportunity. We are designing the first possible to use the thermal equilibrium to describe this in time plasma states. It has a major theoretical importance. An experiment here. These plasma states because they are thermal equilibrium, they are very precise and precise. Well, this one is the plasma's principle. It's a very interesting concept, and it actually I find it very interesting. How to trap this plasma? You know, it's a very rare plasma. It could be a magnetic field. It's present in some of the plasmas the most popular ones. Okay, possibly the most interesting. I'm going to try to charge it out. This red kind of magnetic field actually is a magnetic field. And because it's a it's an electron plasma, it's magnetic field charge. You can bias it to the end of the trap. The negative one is the plasma's principle. So the heat cross beam rotation confines this plasma inside this plasma. The popular is known as the Fenning Barlow plasma. These have no problem. The magnetic field is the main scale of the electron plasma. Of course, there are magnetic fields, and then there are chloride fields. We are theoretically using magnetic fields. We are chloride and magnetic fields. These magnetic fields. So this is interesting. You can bias because if you compare them with the neutral ground parts, the neutral plasmas, one would think that they would be sharp. Required 
and the host of colloidal, colloidal, body is known as the shedding mana. It is here because they are unutilized. There is a self electric field, and the self electric field combined with the colloidal B field gives it an intensification of transcript. And therefore, the rest of the magnetic fields become the colloidal B field. Considering the simplicity of this device, this is interesting. Historically, many applications of colloidal plasma have been used. In fact, if you see the logic in other words, the colloidal perhaps probably preceded the cylindrical type. Somehow, because of the poor confinement, none of these applications were given. And the cell electric field combined with the colloidal B field. So after the early experiments, say the mid 60s and early 70s, most of the efforts were largely spent on the simplicity of this device. And the same thing that we have to do is to succeed. In fact, this is an analogy in other words. The Torrider perhaps did not have to see the late PCC. Once again, the interest in Torrider electron plasma is very high. Who are confined? None of these happened. The initiatives of Professor P.I. John and his student, Guru Vijayavi, later on joined by Samir Chandra. These electron plasmas, they were trying to track it in a small aspect ratio. which means that tidal effects are going to be really pronounced in the initiative which is certainly more challenging and, and therefore the Jewelry Process on one's remark on your remark on your remark what happened they could actually demonstrate steady state equilibrium and invert shifted steady state equilibrium as they saw they could also investigate the effect of radial, radial electric field on this equilibrium Along with the cross field injection studies that we have, the inductive charges are also vital. In fact, when this interval results were presented in a national seminar at Indore, what happened? They could actually demonstrate steady state equilibrium and invert shifted steady state equilibrium as they saw. They could also investigate the effect of radial, radial electric field on this equilibrium. Along with the cross field injection studies that we have, the inductive charges are also vital. In fact, when this interval results were presented in a national seminar at Indore, what happened? They could actually demonstrate steady state equilibrium and invert shifted steady state equilibrium as they saw. They could also investigate the effect of radial, radial electric. State state equilibrium as they saw. We could also investigate the effect of radial radial electric. Robust and very defined confinement theorem. Confinement theorem is a conservation of canonical angular momentum, which allowed them actually, at least theoretically, and later demonstrated experimentally, to confine them in place. Toronto plasmas, on the other hand, it was in fact there was a transport theory which actually. State state equilibrium as the sort. We could also investigate the effect of radial radial electric phenomena that would happen because charged electrons are moved and very high in a Thank you. 
when a child's cloud moves in an inhomogeneous magnetic field and moves from a high field region to a low field region and back to a high field region. So there are actually unequal fluctuations in the wind pattern and the wind perpendicular, causing a net heating and a regular expansion of the cloud. That is what the theory proposes. Rajiv and Lokesh. Yeah, I got it. Rajiv and Lokesh reported this theory. And actually, this theory was applicable for large aspect ratio. So they worked work out the theory for arbitrary aspect ratio, plugged in the aspect ratio with the low aspect ratio values for our issue, and figured out that for the radius of plasma that we can have in this machine, if the confinement time is really 5 seconds or 6 seconds, you would have a plasma which is reasonably up to 2 to 4 years, which is what is expected. But if you had a 100 second plasma, it would suggest very unpredictable temperature. So 100 second plasma really challenged the magnetic pumping transport here. And one probably needs to revisit this and figure out what or where the theory could be going from. In fact, all of this was acknowledged in a review by Thomas Pedersen, the director of W7 in Max Planck, who actually, were examining Lautetius thesis and his result, commented that this is a comprehensive and very deep experimental study of their electron plasma. And he acknowledged that the confinement in the trap reaches say and exceeds the 10 second mark, which is the largest confinement time of a partial pure toroidal sea trap in the world, beating the previous record by a factor of 3 to 4. This then enables them to finally put the confinement theorem by Fuchs and O'Neill to test. Although the authors are careful not to overstate their results, he says, it seems rather obviously to contradict the theorem by Fuchs and O'Neill. He was very impressed, he eulogized and said that the sheer amount of experimental work by Lokesh that is presented here. Is well above my standards for an experimental PhD thesis. The guys have managed in various ways to stabilize the plasma and even set a new world record. So, what does the future hold for us? That has come a long way, become very sophisticated now. In fact, one can now have a 500 second magnetic field with a new toroidal field coil, and you can actually do repeated inject hole dump, inject hole dump, inject hole dump into this trap thereby getting a very statistically validated results. Right? Actual are of the order of 10 to minus 9, and in fact, maybe 10 to minus 10 now, with new cryo pumps and beta pumps being added. There's a PSI system, because now you require long time record of uh, data. So the trap has become very sophisticated, and it's just rightly poised to test the transport theory, to investigate, for example, the breakdown of incompressibility of the <coughs> in an inhomogeneous magnetic field. And internationally also, there's a lot of traction. There's, there's a confinement of both kinds of species, relevant for each is usually being tried in the national exam. Investigation of equal cost pair plasmas are being investigated in toroidal traps now. So there's a lot of synergy between the international experiment. In fact, much of the interest has got revived, as we are told, because of the success that they've achieved in smartex. Of course, I need to acknowledge the various students who will be Sameer, Lokesh, Prabhupada will later on join us as its mentor. Theoretical work, very sudden and theoretical work done by a host of people in IPR and various support groups and individuals who supported us and have actually formed a very big team now. But of course, the acknowledgement to this one person, and if I may dare say that uh, he's probably to provide an electron plasma, but Mambo is to semi-metal. <laughs> Now, I, I, so I know I know you may think that it's an overstatement, but uh, honestly speaking, that is how we view upon it. Because the experiments were very trend setting, and it was at a time when nobody quite believed that we could uh, really achieve so much with the rather electron plasma. So, just a disclaimer of uh, smoking is injurious to the to must be taken seriously. He, he never endorsed it uh, like all celebrities. And, uh, if I were to be asked, um, what do I, what, what have I learned from Dr. John? Uh, many things, but probably it's one abiding thing that I've learned is never, he never considered his achievements as pinnacle of success. For him, it was always just the turning of a new page. And his creative ability drove him from one to another. I find it very, very fascinating. So once again, thank you, Dr. John. Really a privilege to have worked with you. And to be here today, wish you a very healthy, 
and happy and prosperous life to the loved ones around you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Sambaresh. We have been receiving some messages that there was some echo. Anyway, we have some good news also. The, the world has become smaller. So once again, thank you, Dr. John. We are having an online talk. We are here today. Thank you. We are here today. But this type of small wish you a very healthy and happy and prosperous life to the loved ones around you. Thank you so much. Now we yeah. have our next speaker. Thank you, Dr. Sandra. Dr. Ravi Kumar, we have been having a hair of our team. We joined our team in the United States. And, and then uh, about 
So under the Nike project, under the Nike project at the end of end, end of March 2014, where the RFSP unfortunately came to an end because it was um, absorbed into uh, the Board of Research on Nuclear Sciences of UAE, and it formed what was what was then called the Plasma Fusion Research Committee in January 2015, and then uh, it, it, it ran for about three years. And in 2018, uh, the the, the completely revamped their uh, 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 their different uh, committee, and uh, and the plasma and fusion was there, was merged with a, a large project or mega project committee. So from 2007 to 2018, I had the opportunity to work with Professor John regarding national fusion program. This was the logo that we had adopted. For the national fusion program. So, I list some of the major achievements of, uh, of the national fusion program or the RFSP or the FSI, as you can see, as you can say. We had collaborations with over 180 university institutes, RD institutes, and colleges, and over 30 industries across the country in the span of 10 years. And uh, over 190 scientists, right? So, about 200. 200 projects, both in experimental and theory, in less than 10 years. Over 11 areas of plasma, its application, and fusion science and technology. Uh, and all these projects have total budget outflow of, of approximately 50 crores in the 10 years. And uh, as I said, the first funding agency to award RD projects to industry collaboration. Many technologies uh, that were uh, that came out of these projects uh, were used in fusion research and in analysis and as well as FFC machines. And, um, uh, I think few of them were also for, for import substitutes. They, they went on to become import substitutes. And several patents and uh, patents were also awarded for uh, to the PIs of the project. And as a, as a part of manpower development, uh, the RFSP supported uh, 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 what I internship program for, for MTech and master students. And of course, uh, the project, the, the project staff are always encouraged to register for, for PhD. So, why was that? And apparently, BRFSC became extremely popular with, uh, uh, with the PI. By PI, I mean principal investigator, that's external investigator. The main thing was, uh, as Professor John first told me, keep it simple. So, minimum, minimum paper was balanced synergic approach between both, uh, I mean, uh, to both basic and application based projects. And uh, we had the quickest lead time from submission of project to, to, to the peak for the first funding. Within three months, we, we could, uh, uh, within three months of uh, accepting the project proposal, we, were, we could release the first, first installment of, of funding. And the bureaucracy committee and, and, and especially uh, uh, me as a coordinator had very close interaction with, with every PI and, uh, and also the uh, the coordinator from IT. And uh, another thing which we, which we took, which I took extreme pains to maintain was to, to provide extremely quick responses to queries raised by EIPC regarding both technical and administrative aspects of the project. Now, now this is one thing which, 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 was, which was lacking in other, other funding agencies, and we decided that we will do this in the best possible manner. And the committee had very clear understanding of all the kinds of projects. They were making midway course correction of the project much easier by the committee. And again, and especially the committee ensured that, that there was always good interaction between the PI, the PC, and uh, the administration committee. And uh, in fact, the revision meeting helped better execution of the project. So, this is a brief pictorial uh, representation of what the RFSC could do in 10 years. The map, India map on the left side, you can see almost every stage uh, we, we, we were able to cover. And uh, I'm sure that had we been given more time, we could have covered the remaining stage too. But nevertheless, uh, on the right side, you can see the various simple statistics where you can see that uh, universities, institutes, industry, as well as colleges, all were supported for various RD projects. And uh, you can see the, the amount of uh, uh, budget outflow of maximum to university. This was one of the main mandates of, of NFC saying that 
that we should encourage to have very serious collaborations with uh, the university and research institutions so that uh, when India is ready to be ready to build its own system with food, we have the resources especially spread across the country. And uh, again, these are all outflow uh, by by year. And we could see that we could maintain you know, the kind of project uh, uh, and the quality of project too uh, across uh, the, the ten years that we operate. And you can see the various institutions that that actually were collaborating with us. And NIT Rocket, I would like to say, was one of the one of the most active uh, in terms of research projects, especially in the case of uh, of, of, of material science. And uh, here we can see the total number of projects, distribution of projects. As I said, material science had the maximum number of projects. The the new the newer areas like like nucleonics and Medical applications came much later. You can see that there are projects, number of projects that are there. And uh, again, uh, in this case of uh, total budget, when you when you look at it across the area, where the applications of plasma, basic plasma, cryogenics, diagnostics, electrical and electronics, industry, with material science, medical applications, nucleonics, RF and microwave uh, applications, and simulation. So this is a kind of general picture. That uh, I can I can show you, and some of the key achievements of of BRFSC, uh project, that is development of bubble panel liquid nitrogen heat shield, which is used as a uh, 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 um, semi-core substitute, and development of cryo pump components, including the droplet. Now, and now IPR has a very flourishing uh, division that that, that they develop high quality uh, cryo pump, which is in fact. Uh, gives to other institutions too, and uh, in another area is the development of lithium ceramic pebbles for blanket application, uh, then uh, development of virtual reality technology for in vessel training in tokamak machines, the development of new material and special welding techniques for tokamak application, then development of neutron detectors and more efficient shielding material, and development of micro hardware and software for plasma diagnostics, deep learning techniques for tokamak. Data analysis, development of high power RF windows for tokamak application, development of, of, of tomography based plasma diagnostics, and again, uh, the HIT field is one of the best uh, initiatives that the has taken is to initiate basic plasma exchange studies in the universities and college level. Now, now uh, I will attribute some of these uh, uh, these, uh, these initiatives. Professor John, that is, first thing is detailed assessment of the core R&D areas in the project needs to be given. Now, this was discussed during every uh, uh, review meeting by the committee, and certain areas were identified. And and and, and getting projects in these areas were given higher priority. In the second thing, as I said, keep the process extremely simple, and quick quick turnaround time for submission of projects to sanction of funding, promote experimental basic plasma physics. In universities and colleges, support R&D projects to industry, institutions specific areas, and the need for quick resolution of problems faced by PI. So if PI has a problem, then it can be technical, it can be administrative. They can contact us, and we try to we try to uh, to address this problem and give a solution at the earlier. And the, the committee, which is led by Professor John, had a very liberal understanding of the problem faced by the PI during execution of the project and gave uh, the appropriate Solutions to issue, and well, manpower development was another initiative which Professor John uh, uh, started. That is an internship. And this was extremely popular with uh, PG, both physics as well as engineering students. We, we had about 150 to 200 uh, NFT interns uh, over the entire uh, 10 year period. And another thing was multi pronged approach to R and D. For example, if you take one uh, one simple uh, one area, like for example, uh, lithium pebbles for uh, blanket uh, research. We had five groups working, which was ten goals, but in different uh, taking different paths. Now this was one one thing which really I appreciate because this this gave you a, a, a much better understanding of the process. And finally, once uh, in the the fifth year of these projects, we had uh, what is called a focus team meeting where all these uh, three people came together and and we had uh, what should I say very focused discussion and and at the end of this uh, one of these these 
five or six uh, parts which was taken could be take directly forward. And this is one technique which Professor John uh, had proposed, and it did turned out to be very very fruitful. And uh, uh, then there were a lot of other initiatives to, to encourage and you know to motivate uh, the the, uh, of the staff of the project, that is partial support of the project staff, attending international conferences. Uh, and, uh, and and also continue support from project staff, even if for one year, even if they are if they are within a year or two of submission of their PhD thesis. So through various other things, and uh, as I said, close interaction with PI and PhDs of all projects. So I think Professor John knew each project inside out. So so there was no question of of, of you know uh, of him not knowing what was told in the last meeting and, and what was the deliverables uh, uh, what should I say uh, uh, written down by the PI. So Professor John and his uh, uh, committee had very clear uh, idea about every project that was uh, that went through their committee. Then I would say what are my takeaways from, from interacting with Professor John over the last few years? I've learned to keep things extremely simple now. And uh, I've, I've learned to understand that Proper documentation is very, very crucial project management. And I learned uh, various aspects of R&D project management from conception to budgeting to execution of the project. And, and, and I learned that a happy investigator always produces the best results. So, so, and how to understand issues faced by, by BIs and then you can come up with quick and viable solutions to those problems. And uh, how to change the mindset of industry collaborators so these are some of the takeaways for me uh, from uh, from interaction with the Rajal. And some memories, which are the images of various uh, meetings, the last year of the meeting in August 2014, and then uh, there was a gap for about, about a year. And then the first CSRC meeting was in May 15th, and second, and it went on to get about six meetings, and these were the entire team that uh, was, was doing the job. And hey, it was a great, uh, what should I say, mechanism. We, had, we developed a fantastic mechanism which uh, Dr. Sangeeta uh, also acknowledged that from all the committees in, in the PRLS, PFRC was, uh, was the best performing committee. And this, this picture that you see is a, a collection of, of, of various. Uh, PIs and PCs of, of the RFSC project when we met for the last time uh, in April 2000. And on behalf of all the RD collaborators of the RFSC PFRC and the committee members, I wish Professor John a very happy and healthy life. Thank you very much.
Hello, uh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, uh, firstly, uh, a very warm uh, good morning to everyone, and uh, uh, thank you, Sarah, for uh, the introduction. Uh, and I would also like to thank uh, Professor Chaturvedi and uh, the entire SCR team for uh, organizing this. Uh, it's uh, obviously a, a great pleasure to be speaking at this forum. Uh, it's also extremely gratifying to hear all the scientific uh, 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 anecdotes that everyone has been sharing. Uh, I, of course, uh, have been hearing this as I grew up because uh, Professor John would come back home and uh, talk about each of these experts, uh, excerpts of uh, uh, his scientific work. Um, I would like to uh, take the opportunity to talk about some of my work, and I, I, I believe this is a very fitting tribute to Professor John because uh, it's not every day that uh, you get to speak about your uh, work to your own dad. Uh, so um, I'll talk a little bit about uh, this process called membrane fission. And uh, of course, when you talk about uh, fission in physics, uh, we refer to uh, the splitting of the atom. But uh, in biology, it takes a different uh, meaning altogether, which is uh, a pathway or a process that uh, leads to the formation of various uh, compartments inside of the cell. Uh, each of these compartments are uh, basically specialized uh, factories for producing uh, various reactants, chemicals, and uh, also being able to uh, regulate essential cellular processes. So the idea that a single membrane-bound compartment gets broken into two is uh, uh, com constitutes the uh, idea of uh, fission. And uh, if you see this process has uh, literally contributed to uh, evolution of uh, all uh, life forms uh, on Earth. If you take the most simplest uh, uh, organism, which is the bacterium, uh, you see the number of such compartments is very few uh, in this uh, bacterium. And as, uh, during the course, over the course of evolution, cells have essentially managed to make many such compartments, and uh, it's believed that is what uh, has led to the emergence of uh, complexity in uh, living systems. Now, uh, the problem though currently is that uh, if one wants to understand how these compartments are formed uh, inside the cell, uh, this is not a trivial uh, matter. And uh, just to uh, put this problem in perspective, uh, uh, the bulk of uh, cellular processes are managed by molecules which are referred to as proteins. Um, these are all encoded in the genome of uh, a particular organism. And if you take the simplest life form, which is a bacterium, the bacterium would have somewhere close to 4,000 uh, genes that code for about 4,000 proteins. But as you evolve, uh, as you look at more complex uh, uh, life uh, forms, like uh, humans, for instance, that number goes up sevenfold uh, to reach about 20,000 uh, uh, odd uh, proteins. Um, the, the big question in the field is uh, to try and understand which of the 20,000 odd proteins manage to form such compartments. And uh, like I said, this is not a trivial problem because it would take more than uh, several lifetimes to independently assay for each of these 20,000 odd proteins. Now, it's in this regard that uh, uh, what we do in the lab uh, becomes important. And uh, for that, I would like to uh, uh, take a minute to explain to you the approach that we uh, carry out the research uh, in the lab. Um, now, the, the biology field is fundamentally divided into two sets of approaches. And I'll take this uh, slide to uh, exemplify these two approaches. One is an approach which is uh, favored uh, among uh, cell biologists, where you look at a process or a pathway uh, in its entirety, and uh, you wonder at its complexity, and uh, you try and figure out how this complexity has uh, emerged. Uh, the other process, the other method to understand complexity is to literally build it from scratch. Uh, so if I take the analogy of how you uh, you basically cook, or uh, in this case make uh, idli, you can gape uh, or gaze at uh, idlis uh, and uh, try and figure out uh, you know, what made the idli uh, as 
way to do this would be to literally get your hands dirty and go and make it. And in the process, you realize what are the ingredients that have contributed to making this uh, very tasty dish. So it's a process of reconstitution that we carry out in the lab. This is literally taking a few sets of protein, mixing it with other chemicals out of the cell, uh, and reconstituting a reaction which we hope at some point in time would allow us to understand how complexity emerged in uh, in the uh, living system. And in order to do so, in regards to membrane division, uh, I'll take you through the scheme where if you are considering a single compartment, uh, which is membrane count, uh, every time it has to split into these two separate compartments, uh, you could imagine there is an intermediate which is uh, very constricted in nature. And if you think of this intermediate in three-dimensional space, uh, this can very nicely be uh, simulated in the form of a, a membrane cube. So what we have done in the lab uh, as part of uh, our efforts to understand the process of fission is to make these uh, membrane tubes artificially. Uh, these are, as you see in this slide, these are um, uh, these are long membrane uh, 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 nanotubes. Uh, the dimensions of these tubes are somewhere close to about 50 to 100 nanometers, uh, and these are all nicely uh, arranged on uh, glass count slips. And uh, the kind of assays that we uh, engage in are where we flow in um, a protein uh, of choice and uh, watch it uh, carry out this process of uh, membrane fission in real time under the microscope. So this gives us an advantage of immediately testing which proteins are uh, important uh, for fission. You will see as soon as this protein sees these membrane nanotubes, this entire long nanotube literally gets sized into tiny bits. So this is our approach to understand the complexity. What we would like to, at some point in time, taking this forward, is to uh, literally ask if, which of these 20,000 odd proteins that are present in human cells have uh, evolved to uh, manage this kind of reaction. The, the next question is, can we piece together these uh, uh, individual reactions to understand complexity? And our hope then is to be able to recreate life uh, outside of the cell. So um, with that, I'd like to uh, move on to uh, the real reason why uh, I'm here. We're um, obviously here to um, celebrate Professor John's uh, achievements. Uh, uh, and uh, I take this opportunity to present a very personal account of um, how Professor John has influenced uh, me and uh, all of us in the family. Uh, I would also like to say that uh, none of this would have been possible uh, without uh, Minu John, my mom. Um, I think it's this remarkable chemistry between uh, my dad and my mom uh, that has held together this family so coherently and uh, made us uh, who we are. Um, I would start by talking about what are the influences uh, that I uh, uh, that I gained, uh, that I lived uh, while I was uh, uh, with Papa and Emma. The first uh, major influence is uh, how they organized uh, our home. Uh, our home was an extremely creative uh, workplace. Uh, there was not uh, a single uh, corner in the, in the in the house which did not have interesting things to be inspired uh, of. Uh, be it uh, Amma's uh, garden, uh, Appa's uh, books, uh, literally the entire house was filled with bookshelves which had very, very interesting uh, things to read. Um, Appa, in his off, during all his travels, he would pick up these very small curios and uh, the house was littered with these curios. Anytime you look around, each of these things uh, got you to wonder how they came about, what was the history behind them, and uh, this is really contributed to an extremely enriching uh, and uh, creative uh, uh, living space uh, for us. The second uh, very important aspect was uh, we are a family that would uh, engage in debates and arguments, and this was very, very common uh, for us. Uh, we would uh, uh, get together uh, during holidays, and uh, uh, frequently, Appa would be the first person to uh, initiate something provocative and uh, wait for us to respond. And in so doing, uh, it essentially got us to understand that it is through discussion and exchange of ideas that one uh, moves forward. Uh, if I can uh, especially uh, point uh, to this uh, picture on the top right, this is where uh, Appa called all of us. This is sometime during uh, Christmas break, where uh, he, he prepared an elaborate uh, 
PowerPoint uh, presentation on um, how to invest in mutual funds. Um, and this got all of us uh, thinking about um, obviously uh, where does uh, this man get all the time uh, to do uh, all these uh, things so beautifully. Um, the third uh, very important aspect is um, I always remember uh, Appa would mention that um, it is important to uh, have hobbies in life, uh, but more importantly, it is, uh, it is uh, critical that you excel at these hobbies. Uh, and uh, I believe uh, uh, this is something that was told uh, to Appa by the late Professor Lan. Uh, and uh, uh, all of us, you, I'm sure, uh, know uh, Professor Jong uh, has many hobbies. He started off with uh, sketches, uh, paintings, uh, which is something that he still continues to do. And uh, lately, uh, it has transformed into this extremely uh, interesting uh, blog that he has. Uh, he puts out uh, a blog uh, literally um, every weekend. Um, and uh, it's uh, quite remarkable as to how prolific he has been uh, as far as his hobbies are concerned. And more importantly, it's remarkable as to how he excelled in each of these uh, hobbies. So um, we are a family that is uh, entirely obsessed with uh, Star Wars, and uh, I would like to take the Star Wars jargon uh, to uh, uh, to uh, mention about uh, Professor John. Uh, to me, he is like a, a Jedi master. The force is very strong with this one. Uh, Professor John exerts tremendous influence without ever being explicit. He encouraged uh, self-introspection that led us to discover our own path in life. And uh, bottom line is, uh, he, according to him, he encouraged us to do whatever you want in life. Uh, but the only uh, uh, the, 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 the important uh, thing over here is that we should be uh, doing it well. Um, with that, I uh, joined uh, my family in uh, wishing Appa Yeah. 
Carol was planning to start work in experimental pathology when I was beginning to be disillusioned with the engineering at Eliger. And after a decade in ERL, the plasmodium program, and Aditya happened with a collective effort of many people, an understanding director and the supporting council made plasma processing and STIP possible. The exposure at IAEA made me aware of the importance of ether, the DAE dispensation, the body of Indian participation in ether also happened at the right time. My past experience with the light research project enabled the creation of APRFSP. All of these opportunities presented themselves, and one needed only to have a reasonable competence and an honest commitment to fulfill the demands these uh, opportunities made. When you start uh, When you start your career, you have many options. One option is to live within your zone of comfort, setting targets which are easily achieved and generally taking life easy. The second is to push boundaries, consciously selecting difficult targets and objectives. SDIT is an excellent example of the latter. Difficult boundaries. Developing technology for industry is a difficult task. Unlike basic research, where you can publish whether your experiment fails or succeeds, industrial technologies have to be delivered to a very demanding clientele who are generally not forgiving. So this is generally true of all technologies. But <clears throat> In my work, I have been blessed with over case to share my vision in the activities I initiated. I was indeed fortunate to have students who were willing to take risks in choosing non-conventional topics for the teaching work. I was also blessed with senior colleagues who were very supportive of my uh, chosen options. Somebody talked about uh, the, the non-neutral plasma experiment, mm -hmm. uh, which actually happened uh, after I learned about a presentation by Professor Walter Geckelman from UCLA on magnetic recollection, where he showed a movie on the evolution of the magnetic field mapped by hundreds of magnetic probes. I realized that pursuing basic plasma physics with that kind of diagnostic arsenal was beyond me. The alternative was to explore relatively untouched areas of plasma physics, where a little effort in innovative thinking could give us many low hanging fruit. My foray into low aspect ratio of toroidal non neutral plasma was entirely driven by system physics. So the device was very simple and evacuated the cylinder with a conductor to the cell hole, a filament to emit electrons. Rising current in the thermal conductor creates a ring magnetic field. As field rises, it sweeps in the electrons to the boundary into the minor axis and the toroidal cloud is formed. Somebody mentioned the transition from this to a uh, injection inside. And I remember specifically objections posed by Avinash and Abel, right, that Losing toroidal continuity may even destroy the equilibrium. But then what I had in mind was that we could create this discontinuous plasma somewhere in the outer periphery with a large aspect ratio, and then by applying radial electric wheels, move the ring in and create a continuous ring. This is an experiment which I had suggested to somebody, but it has not been done yet. So that may create a, a plasma which is very unique in the way of its form, its close to thermal equilibrium, but has complete continuity. And so we may yet create a, a continuous torus with a, with a inside injection. Somebody else is not. Anyway, what, what is the truth is that uh, we have, by very simple design devices, we can create. Great physics, and somebody has shown that 
environment and it will expose to a retinal question which is how it is emerging from the in a in a natural field. So that is a uh, very good. I mentioned this earlier, there is a paradigm in plasmabilis that new plasma create new plasmabilis. So, dusty plasma, the plasma formed inside liquid, the plasma formed in dielectric gap, or laser cooled, ultra cold plasma. So, these are all interesting new plasma that flow. In, in plasma for, formed in liquid, there is a fundamental issue that we still do not understand. How did the plasma get formed? Some people say it is an electronic breakdown of the liquid. Some people say the plasma forms inside nano bubbles which expand. So, even this fundamental question as to formation of plasma and uh, and the liquid plasma is very very uh, rewarding area to go into. When we come to plasma processing. Plasma processing a, is a still a very dynamic field with activities in many applications. But there are three drivers which seem to be setting the pace. One is the global warming mitigation that is connected with solar fuels and fuel reforming. Second is environmental remediation which is connected with waste recycling, waste energy, fuel reforming. And third is energy. The hydrogen economy that is now emerging and the role of plasma processing in that. In, 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 in uh, talking about uh, new sustainable carbon cycle with carbon uh, dioxide uh, conversion into fuel, we are now talking of a circular economy where carbon dioxide will be extracted from the atmosphere and converted to fuels and chemicals, thereby uh, the whole process becomes carbon neutral. And already uh, this mimics the carbon cycle of the earth. And uh, which has been in near equilibrium for uh, uh, in the earth for millions of years. So the new carbon cycle is uh, part of the circular uh, economy. The clear benefit is that it allows us to continue using the existing infrastructure for hydrocarbon energy storage and transport, etc. And uh, already uh, startups are beginning to happen in this, even entrepreneurs like Bill Gates are in this field of carbon dioxide extraction and conversion. And so this is a very rich field to consider. Uh, being attached to. So the associated vision here is that as I said, carbon dioxide is extracted, converted to fuels and chemicals and used and it does not, it produces carbon dioxide but there is no net carbon dioxide. So it's carbon neutral. So the question is, this solar fuel plant uses solar energy to convert carbon uh, uh, dioxide into chemicals. Can it be a plasma-based non-equilibrium plasma chemical reactor which drives a variety of conversion reactions? This is an interesting variant on the current non-plasma process. Currently, it's all conventional chemistry which is being used. But can we convert into plasma process? Both the conversion equipment and the throughput are targets for improvement. Microwave plasmas and gliding arc plasmas are uh, favorite for the application. The products are synthetic hydrocarbon fuels and chemicals. The fuel can be stored in the gas grid in the form of chemical energy. Big 
microwave plasma torches. And the microwave plasma torches are admitting that the higher electron temperature, which increases the gas component, carbon monoxide, hydrogen, as against solids and liquids. So the output product is very uh, heavily uh, biased uh, for uh, gas product, induction gas product. So that is very good. And the second uh, opportunity is plasma processing for uh, hydrogen economy. And then the target that uh, the hydrogen production to be economically viable has to be uh, 60 grams per kilowatt hour or two dollars per kilogram of hydrogen. And apparently this can be met by uh, the, the carbon monoxide being converted by water gas chip reaction into hydrogen and here the plasma processing can play an important role. Breakthrough uh, in plasma associated conversion is the role of plasma catalysis. Conventional catalysis works on heat and surface reactions to convert uh, molecules from one type to another. The plasma itself provides additional uh, reactivity and so plasma as a catalyst or plasma associated with plasma mediated catalysis is gaining ground. But this is an area I think plasma processing generally should get into and I, I suggest that uh, IPR should also look at this one. So this is the uh, plasma catalyst interaction and uh, there is a synergy here because the plasma catalyst works on the plasma, the catalyst works on the plasma and the plasma works on the catalyst. So there is a net productivity increase because of this complex interrelation uh, uh, because of that. So, so these are a few ideas which I thought I should share with you. Because plasma processing has to be relevant to the society and what is relevant, very majorly relevant these days are issues which I mentioned like climate change, mitigation, energy recovery and uh, waste energy conversion, hydrogen and so on. So if we can design our plasma processing program to meet the current requirements of the society, I think it will be accepted and will be very successful. So let me thank uh, once again all of you for taking pains to organize this event and thank all the speakers for the very kind words they had to talk about me and uh, I really am extremely touched by this gesture and thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> You have to stop sharing.
share it with you. I think you share. Yeah, I'm trying. I just want to give me this thing that application is currently minimized. from here also. We have just completed our technical talk and now we are going to hear from everybody the contributions and the feelings you have about Professor John. So for the next sessions I would also ask Professor John to ask your wife to be with you so that you can both enjoy the feelings and the expressions given by all our colleagues as well as you. Thank you madam for joining us. I could see you sitting silently on the side listening to us.
scientific research and technology development in the country. So I'm not going to talk about all these things because they've already been covered so beautifully by all the previous speakers. But what is remarkable is, is that doing all this, we've also managed to leave a very exciting and creative part. So for all that, my heartiest congratulations to you. And in my talk, I'm going to share some of the excitement uh, that you have passed on to me and how I have benefited in my uh, long friendship by knowing you and learning about you. So we've really had a very long association. Of those 80 years, I've known you for nearly 47 years. So we really go back a long way. And over this very long period, when I look back, I can think of so many wonderful memories and shared experiences. Of course, this was not always very easy. Uh, I recall the early awkwardness that I had with you, the man of few words, who was not given to chit chatting. I recall in the early days when you first come to PRL and after a while when I got to know you and we used to chat sometimes. Uh, it was very difficult because your public image at that time was that you were a man of few words, you did socialize and you did not like chit chatting. In fact, you came across as a very intense and serious person. So people were always hesitant to come and chat with you. In later years, of course, you added a further shielding to your face. You developed a really thick, bushy beard. And so that was your device shielding. And that further intimidated people to come and talk to you. But I was fortunate that I was able to penetrate that shield of yours. Our early conversations, I recall, were very bursty. Like I would say, ask you something or describe it in a long sentence. And your answer would be either a yes or no, or half a sentence. And then I would be scratching my head, what is the next thing I should now ask him? If you recall, we used to share a car ride for so many years. And that has really given me the opportunity to know you a lot more. But in the early days, this is what I said. But then soon I think I realized that this was really your way of conveying things. Whatever you said, even if it was in a few words, made a lot of sense. And you did not need too many words to describe what you wanted to say. No additional verbiage from your part. And this really impressed me. And this is a this is a characteristic, and this is a feature and a quality that you have maintained to this day, as many of the speakers also remarked. Your thoughts are very precise, and you know how to express them in a very disciplined manner. And that is something that I have admired a long time. And once I understood this, it showed that the economy of words that you are using it really arose from your clarity of thought and your mental efficiency. So this realization really opened up the door to your mind and personal. And that's what deepened our relationship, opened up our relationship, and we were able to converse very quickly. So with that understanding, I really began to enjoy our friendship and fellowship. And when I think back over all these years, it's really a treasure trove of very enriching experience. Of course, in this very short time, I cannot recall, I cannot recount all of those, but I'll try to touch upon a few of them. One was your very intuitive and original way of thinking. And it first came to light when you had visited me at MIT, uh, when I was spending a sabbatical year there. This was way back uh, in the late 70s, uh, between 76 and 78. So this was the time when uh, you had come to MIT and I took you for a visit to Versailles. At that time, you were not very much into Tokumax. You had been working on basic plasma physics, and you were on to relativistic neutron beams, and plus uh, pulse uh, sources and all that. But when you looked at the device, you had so much inquisitiveness about this thing. This was a simple device that had been designed by the MIT students, and they were operating. But your penetrating question and the way you looked at the whole device was very refreshing and very intuitive. And the whole Versetio group was very impressed by it. And later on, when you came home and you discussed this thing, you saw the very un 
uncanny understanding of the physics of my M.G. Albert, Black Brothers, which you pointed out to me, the story about the post partition trauma. But what was most interesting for me was it was set in a, in a, in, in the city of Chandanagar, which was actually an earlier extension state. And this was a city that I had to, uh, used to visit a lot in my childhood. Very <laughs> fond memory of it. So this day, this book brought a life for me, the full scenario of this scene in Chandanagar. Another French city which has always fascinated me, and I believe it's your favorite too, is Extra Provence. And I remember telling you about this book that I had read on Provence, which is a book by Peter Mayle on uh, a year in Provence. And then when we gone to this bookshop in Extra Provence, in the book and bar, you immediately picked up this book. And then we had a very nice discussion. I think books were the vehicle that you used to convey many ideas not only to absorb new ideas, but also to trans, uh, transfer it to your friends. So that's how I came to know about your interest in music, which I'm not aware of. That happened when you actually lent me a book by Aaron Auckland, who is a famous American music critic and composer. I was always fond of listening to Western classical music, but I had no training in it and I had no background in it. I didn't understand it. But this book, which you thankfully read it to me, told me about the grammar of Western music, what to it demands it, and what to listen for, and what to appreciate. So, from that book onwards, I came to know, we went on to other topics of music. So, books and music, we expanded our repertoire. And it told me what, how eclectic your taste was in music. It ranged all the way from classical to Western, A.R. Rahman. At that time, Matoza was a movie that was the rage of the time, and his music, his haunting uh, and lilting music, was something that we all appreciated. Like was, of course, your passion and talent for painting, particularly you are highly developed in their eyes, and saw the of people. And it was not only just how you discussed it, how, how you looked at things, but you are also very generous with your painting, and you gifted it to many people. I still treasure the painting that you gave me, which really is was a wonderful adornment for my state study, and kept reminding me of the highly developed inner eye that you have, of how capturing beauty of nature on, on an inner painting. Another topic that fascinated me, and we discuss very often, and this might surprise people, was the Syrian Christian Church and the Syrian community, Syrian Christian community. Having gone to a Catholic school, I was fairly knowledgeable about the Christian religion. So I was curious about other branches of religion, or other branches of the Christian religion. So when I came to know that you belong to the Christian Church, I was always pestering you with questions. And I was amazed at how knowledgeable you are about it and your recounting of the history of the evolution of this church in India and your description of the very tight-knit and highly accomplished community who have made outstanding contributions to many fields. So I also sense the pride in this community, how you are so happy and so proud to belong to this uh, and that community. So that, in a way, explains some of uh, your personal activity. This pride that you took in this community was not in a narrow sense of religious identity, but it was an expression of your deep-rooted cultural mooring. And I feel that this solid cultural mooring that you have is responsible for the source of your other qualities, namely your profound self-confidence, your independence of thought, and your self-reliance. In one word, when you look back at your work, and I've always admired this in you, that you've never looked to the West for approval or recognition. Whether it was in the physics that you're doing, or the technology that you're developing, you were so confident of what you wanted to do, 
And you always recognized what was the need of the day, the need for the country there. And you went along with that. So, in one word, you had asked my dear long before this term became the political buzzword of our day. But to me, I think you are much more than an Asma Nirpur person. When I look at your achievements, coupled with your varied interests, your creativity, your talents, and your highly developed sense of aesthetics, to me you qualify as a true Pranasa man. So knowing you and having you amongst us has been an inspiration for all of us. And you really contributed just like the masters of the Renaissance period in Italy and Europe did. You have done the same kind, you played the same kind of role amongst us in the Indian history. So, let me reiterate again that your friendship has really meant a great deal to me. And I hope you will continue to be active and creative as ever. And that your wisdom and your vision that you outlined just a few minutes ago will continue to guide this institute and this country. So I wish you many more years of creative life and my best wishes to you and Menu. Many, many happy and healthy years together. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Chen. We will now make a come to the famous name John P. Riverside Association of the Department. Professor Chen, 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 Professor Actually, actually, you know, this, you know, this is a very uh, privilege for me, in fact, like uh, to share these um, his messages, basically, received from um, your friends, associates, and students. Um, so we have uh, learned about your, um, you know, the scientific, uh, the first part of our session was all about your scientific contributions. But um, this part is the, um, is the other part of Professor John, the other side of the coin, I must say that uh, through these messages, we would like to reveal the qualities that he has. Already Professor Sain and uh, Thomas already, you know, said about uh, how the inspiration and other things is, uh, I must say, I tell to Thomas that not only in the family um, he has spread the, the inspirations, but wherever he, he was um, in, uh, in associations, he was just like a magnet, magnetized the people uh, and the students, um, you know, to inspire them and, uh, and achieve the heights that they are, they are today. Uh, so I would uh, like to start this uh, felicitation messages from Professor John. So, uh, so uh, honestly, uh, we have received so many, um, so many messages, and many people wanted to say so many things. Um, so when I was asked to take up this job, so there was the planning that we have to take, like how, um, you know, how to organize these so many messages. So I tried to um, categorize the, um, you know, the goes that, uh, that emerged from these messages. Uh, so, uh, from the eyes of a student, you are a remarkable guru and teacher. Um, from the family and your uh, the, the friends, so you are a very nice human being. You are simple, you are uh, loving and caring, as we all know. From your blogs, now we know that like you are so creative, philosopher. I've already uh, shown that how much organization cap capability that you have um, um, building FCIPT and so many different uh, uh, you know, things that you have achieved. Um, there was uh, also people have complained that you are very reserved and very quiet. 
So, so it was very difficult to make a conversation with you. And many of the times that when I visited and I wanted to speak something to you, but I never got that, you know, it never came out. But I think that I've got this opportunity today. So I can, I'm free now, I can speak out a lot. Um, and there were messages people were not able to express in the words, but I can uh, really sense that how much um, you know, there, there was going in the mind that they, they wanted to tell many things about you. So, so I would, um, if I have to ask, uh, tell about, you know, this guy about Professor John, so P I J, basically simply P symbolizes for a philosopher. And according to I, so I is an immense source of inspiration for all of us. J, you are a judicious person in all walks of life. So that's how uh, I would describe Professor John. So uh, let me begin with uh, uh, with the, your uh, messages received from uh, uh, from the associates of the BRST. So. Um, so more than a decade, Professor uh, John was chairman in the, uh, and the driving force of the BRST, BRFST and later PRFRC and BRNS. So during these years, there were uh, your associates of Professor Amit Roy, Dr. Ashish Ray, and Dr. Sangeeta were also part of a team and they have sent some messages. So in the next couple of slides, I'm going to display them their messages. So I would first start with uh, Professor Amit Rai. He is uh, presently ex-director, um, sorry, he was ex-director of IUSC and presently adjunct faculty in Manipal Center for Natural Sciences. He attributes uh, the growth of plasma physics research and its applications in the country owes a lot to your sustained efforts. So he has sent us a video uh, message that I'm going to play now. I uh, met Professor John. Yeah, first, for 25 years, I guess, in the GST program at the Royal Canadian Navy. In the Navy, it's almost three hundred years in the special program in plasma physics. You can carry a free activity in the university. After that, I uh, got to know him much better during the meetings of the Board of Research Institutions and Science and Technology, which is chair. And uh, I learned a lot about how to conduct a, an effective and fruitful meeting in being firm, but at the same time not being aggressive, and how to keep the time sheet. So the job will cut to the flat and come to the heart of the matter without wasting any time. This ability to maintain his equanimity under very trying circumstances at times certainly may be attributed to his all-rounded personality, part of which is revealing these days to his blogs. And I am lucky to be a reader of his blogs. I consider it a privilege of mine to, to have known him all these years. May he live a very long and healthy life and continue to inspire and lead by his example. Thank you. Thank you, Amit Rai Sarai. Um, so, I, uh, I will now proceed to the next speaker. Uh, so, Dr. Sangeeta, she was a former secretary, uh, former scientific secretary in, uh, in, uh, in the RNS, and that scientist from BRC, and uh, she has uh, been many happy returns of the day, and a audience activist, a family employee. I met Professor John for the first time in 2014 at IPR guest house. At that time, he did, I did not know anything about him except that he was undoubtedly the only choice as the chairman of PFRC, the Plasma and Fusion Research Committee of BRNSC, formed in lieu of BRFST. I have been fortunate enough to interact with him during several of PFRC meetings in my capacity as scientific secretary of the RMS. His decisions were not just based on the presentation and reports of the principal investigators. Instead, he used to monitor the process of action projects through user feedback and sometimes even personal impact. 
direction. I must confess that BFRC was, in fact, the best performing committee of PRMS. Professor John has been instrumental in connecting people for collaborative work. He is a leader in two sense with exceptional quality of building and leading a team. He is so knowledgeable, yet humble and approachable. My respect for him went on increasing as I slowly got to know different dimensions of his persona. On his birthday, I pray that Professor John continues to remain fit and spread happiness in his loving family and scientific, scientific community as well. Hello, Professor John. Wish you a very, very happy birthday and a healthy and prosperous and married. It was in March 1982 that I first heard your lecture on water pulse forming line that you delivered in BRC in a symposium organized by Dr. P. H. Ron. That was in high voltage symposium. And I realized that our line of work do match somewhere. But it was only two decades back that I had an opportunity to interact with you rather closely. You were the chairman of committee. I was a member. And during that I realized that you are a person not only a very good at plasma physics as well as in plasma technology, which itself is a very rare commodity nowadays, particularly in these days of specialization. You are a connoisseur of literature and performing arts and fine arts. You, you had uh, written a book of poems which you very kindly gifted me. Your website on your paintings and your blogs that you write nowadays speak volume about it. Having gone through all of them, I came to a conclusion that you belong to a rare group of people for whom the left lobe of the brain and the right lobe have developed equally well and are performing equally well, unlike ours. And I have tremendously benefited from your association and for that I must thank you. So, Dr. John, I again wish you a very happy birthday and a very healthy time ahead. And I must also thank the organizers who gave me this opportunity to present my views on this occasion. Thank you.
training diligently and perhaps comfort after having reached the study job. Um, yeah. This creative bit will con continue to unfold for the benefit of the society. So thank you, um, Mr. Ron. So I'm now, so I'm going to show these messages uh, received from Mr. A. Vishwanathan He was a former director of New Technology Development Group in ERC. So, Professor T.I. John, a case birthday marking the 49th show. And it is represented as a man who has seen thousands of names. Mr. John had an illustrious career scientist, technologist, innovator, organizer, coordinator, and administrator in many, many ways. So I wish Professor John happy birthday and a very happy and healthy life. I do hope you wish him on his 100th birthday. Too. That was a message from Venkat Ramani. So thank you, sir. So next message is received from Professor K.P. Maheshwari. He was a former Professor of Physics in Delhi Area University, Indore, and uh, lecture faculty now in the University of Kota. He sent his birthday wishes um, to having reached the secretary of the job. Thanks for your continuous support and your research activities in the university and public in the I'm going to play this video message. Hello, Professor Chan. Very happy birthday. And uh, wish, wish you many happy returns of the day. You have been a remarkable person and a very dedicated scientist. We have seen you since the establishment of IPR and many national institutions developed by you. You have been a key promoter of uh, plasma science in all the universities and colleges of the country and uh, encouraged the teachers to take up uh, a high quality research. I am deeply impressed and uh, very much grateful to you for efforts in helping and supporting our research. You, Professor John, you have been very cool and very calm and quiet persons that that, had, that, that impressed all of us. We have seen you in national seminars and uh, national symposia. And a very dedicated plasma physicist. We wish you a very many happy returns of the day and congratulate you of being up to your generation. Uh, we wish you good health and all cheers. Uh, in this coming ahead. Thank you, uh, Professor Mehshwari. Um, so, next message we have received from uh, Professor Ashish Jamsi, who is now an emeritus professor uh, at Delhi. And uh, so, thank you, Professor Ashish Jamsi, acclaimed Professor John as a visionary person and for promoting scientific research and in the university in India. He talked about his major contribution in building up STATI and range of experiments starting from the fundamental solar physics to Aditya and Superman. So, um, I think let me wish you on your uh, <coughs> birthday. So, thank you, Professor Gandhi. So, next. We have um, Professor Sikh Sakrina, uh, retired scientist at IPR, and uh, he has been with the city for, say, about maybe I know, 30 years. Um, so he has wished him a very happy birthday and many, many happy returns. So, thank you, So, next message we have from uh, Professor Asuka Mardar. Professor Das is uh, now a vice chancellor chairman in Odisha State Higher Education Council. And he has uh, sent his message. 
speaks of Prophet John and his inspiration, as he had inspiration to take time for students and professionals working in the area of experimental with the industrial class of science for the last five years. And he's personally been great, been a great fan of Professor John, and ever since he met him at his PRL Plasma Laboratory. So, this is such a thing that on attaining 80 years, and prayer to the Lord, he is blessing you with long life, good health, and happiness. Please continue to shine for the young classroom. Thank you, Professor Dha. So, uh, the next message is from Professor Avinash Shai. Professor Avinash Shai is now Vice Chancellor at Sikkim Central University. And he has expressed his comments like for Professor John being an experimentalist par excellence. So he, and, he and I, meaning Professor Avinash, have collaborated on a number of problems related to the non neutral plasmas, dynamistic expansion, etc. And he has appreciated that his experimental clairvoyant thinking, by which he could by which he as, uh, as an answer to the complex problems. So I wish him the very best for his good life and health. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Vinash. So the next message we have received from Professor Ganesh Prasad. He is now a professor at the Institute for Advanced Research. And he describes that Professor John is a very good mentor. And he is uh, really short of words to describe his, uh, what his interaction is with him. Now please accept his best, best wishes on, your, on his birthday. Thank you, Ganesh. So I would now try to reveal how Professor John Kumar has died. So personally, it is, you know, what you learn from him. He never provided a spoon to you, first of all. But he was always available for, in, in case the crisis, to provide practical solutions. Interaction with, uh, with his students was like an impulse. It was just like a perturbation, like throwing up an idea, posing a fundamental question, and vanishing. Unless that perturbation was daily paper and form. He had an enormous patience to see how the students struggled to develop their own understanding. The most important thing is the failure and success taken in the same thing. That is, if the experiment is successful, it will help to assert the intellect, while its failure would mean an opportunity to perfect one's intellect. So these qualities, these teachings, that we need to help us a lot during our course, you know, the later part for life. So the invitation is a source for invention. Actually, uh, one time, Professor John had his experience that, uh, that how uh, he used a 10 pence of wine, or I don't remember it was 10 or 20 pence of wine, or he used to make a pinhole electrode for setting some electron beam. So all this these things experiment. And learning by making the thing through intuition, have a very good intuition, you know, teaching that what is happening. And also he used to suggest that you make simple and less time to experiment. What IPR workshop would make you And I must say that he has a tank full of unconventional ideas to challenge any limitation. So when I joined IPR, at that time I was traveling, you know, to see my budget was fine. So one time at that time he had advice to relieve the commercial pressure to that for making a recognized vacuum system for action. So such kinds of unconventional ideas only for the John could do. So I would uh, start um, with Professor uh, with uh, Dr. Uh, K.K. Jain. He is uh, he has done his PhD on Professor John in 1982. His title was Studies on Interaction of Rotating Signal in Plasma. He is presently at 
Kumasi Research Laboratory. I have highlighted a few of the important uh, papers which I think are Professor John is a man of green quality. He is a leader, he is an expert in setting up plasma laboratories, plasma technology, work for plasma processing in India. He is a man of few words and more action. He is sincere and hardworking. He is an author, painter, poet, and good human being. The remarkable journey by him from his school, college to law, and to reach the height and to receive the Sagarthi Award. So I wish. Professor John, very happy birthday. Many, many more years of serving uh, in the lab. I could see uh, Kishi Jain uh, is also uh, online, I think. So he might be watching us right now. OK, so um, so next, um, Dr. Vijay Shankar. He did his uh, PhD under Dr. John, uh, 1988. His paper was studies on the effect of cell cells Propagation of rotating relativity like on beam. He's uh, presently um, in a different field now, in the area of computing uh, query based process for science facility. But he acknowledges that the methodology that, uh, and the training that he has earned in his research has provided him very useful for his current job. So thank you, Vijay. So, next student talk to me is. Dr. Senaradi, he has done his PhD, um, his PhD title is studies on the high current electron electron wind spectroidal device, and he was former Dean R&D, Institute for Plasma Research. So he has described many words for uh, for Professor John, that he remained an enigma to me as he spoke very little. It was very much after my PhD that I started Understanding him bit by bit. Closure reading of his blog shows the keenness in of his observations and purpose of everything that happens around us and how they are connected up to his composition. I regarded him as one, someone who knows the right not to twiddle if something wasn't working. The way it should be. In, his, in my opinion, he is an experimentalist far exceeded. So I wished him many, many, many <coughs> happy, healthy, and purposeful. So next message is from Dr. Purvis Dabedi. Um, his uh, PhD title was Studies on non Plasma. He completed PhD in the year 1991. So um, he has spent five years congratulations on completing 80 years and wishing you a very happy, very long and healthy life. Thank you, Purvis. So now it's uh, Dr. Subroto Mukherjee. And he uh, he is presently a senior professor. He's a brilliant and devoted leader. And after Professor John retired, he let me establish his vision for maybe 12 years. So uh, he considers uh, Professor John as his scientific guru, and he has learned how to think like scientists. And he is privileged to contribute towards the development of SPCT, and he prefers. You uh, in inspiring younger people for many, many years to come. Thank you, Dr. Sudhir Mukherjee. So now we have uh, my friend, is uh, from the US, Deepak Gupta. So he is a lead, uh, sorry, he has done his PhD. The uh, title was Studies on High Pressure Non Equilibrium Plasma. And he is now presently lead scientist in uh, trial Synergy Technologies. So he has uh, he has sent a video message that I will display. Dear Professor John, happy 80th birthday. It's an honor to be part of this special celebration. I think I'll say this on behalf of all your students. When we started our PhDs in the silvery wall of IPR, we were like say electrons, surrounded by a sea of atoms, basically lots of and another other another problem. Then we have you. And as you predicted in your poem of song of Jay Electron, by now we are a crowd. Those who started late have also joined the race. Given the mandate to jostle the atom, excite a few. Deep in the torus is a shade of the globe. First John, thank you. Thank you to give us power and a direction to grow. I wish you a happy 80th birthday and a lifetime of health and joy. Thank you, Deepak. 
like a biological cell. And what does it do? It basically allows only the things that it needs inside. But if you reject it, so that is very important. And this boundary is basically your calmness. So you can be deliciously choose the good moments in your life. And you use them artistically through your poetry, through your painting, through your blog. Am I right, sir? Thank you. And uh, to finish this off today, so I uh, got your one of your paintings. And basically, I can see a light. You know, you have probably different story, but what it is, what I could imagine is that your painting is revealing that the human life, our own our life, is an interesting journey towards accomplishing this ultimate vision. It's never ending. You know, we are seeing the light in life. And please keep us blessing. And we want to guide him. And we want to grow, and we want to study, we want to find, and maybe our children also get motivated to the next generation, and they also aspire to be great. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. So I see. Thank you, Shantanu. For this path breaking life that you have shown of all the friends, students, and also from some of the members of SPA. Before we end, we've got two more events to go. One is giving you a token because today is your day, that is a token of gratitude. And lastly, which is the last celebration, which I will give you that is a surprise. So now, we have prepared a souvenir, a booklet from the memory of this occasion. This booklet entitled Plasma and Pukkale, celebrating 80 years of PI Dawn. It includes all the collection of the talks and the messages that we have shared today online. An e-copy of this souvenir will be shared in the website so everyone can have a look at it. So for this, we have invited a director, Professor Shashan Chaturvedi, to release the booklet. Let's give a big hand when it is being released. Thank you, Professor. Uh, Thank you, Professor. Uh, Thank you. 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 Thank you
कार्यक्रम के अंत तरफ पहुँच रहे हैं अंत में प्रोफेसर दुरोम के एक और विद्यार्थी जो इस कार्यक्रम के चेयरमैन है उसके बारे में कुछ बताना चाहते हैं कई सालों तक एस सी के प्रमुख संचालक की तरह कार्यरत पिन करो ना मुखर्जी को पिन करो तो प्रोफेसर संजय जॉन माय साइंटिफिक गुरु सर मैंने मैंने यहाँ पे इंटर कर दिया मैडम मिनी जॉन थैंक यू फॉर बीइंग विद अस It is indeed an honor for me to be part of this event as a part of the organizing committee, celebrating Professor T. I. John's contributions in the Plasma Science Institute and the Institute. A few months back, we realized, some of us who have just participated, we realized that on 18th March 2021, Dr. John was born. So we thought that we should have a celebration. Of course, we wanted to do it in a long, like a one day thing event, but So we wanted to celebrate it, but thought that let us discuss it in more detail. So on one Sunday afternoon, I called Professor John and uh, I called on his mobile number, but he immediately told, "No, I will talk with you on Zoom." And before I could uh, do anything on Zoom, I already got the Zoom link from Professor John. So that tells that he, you know, Zoom is a discovery of last year, the pandemic year. And so Professor John is already very much aware about how to use Zoom and everything. So, so that was something we, we chatted on Zoom for nearly like uh, 40 uh, minutes or so. And he was, and, uh, you know, he was extremely excited, very happy. And he said, okay. So then after that, we found we did some sort of, you know, a preliminary program and discussion with him. And he gave us the permission to go. So, sir, we are extremely you know, happy that you give us the permission to hold this program and bring it. Then, of course, uh, the behind while we were doing this time, we are in constant touch with our director, Dr. Prashant Chaturvedi. He also told me we must bring this event. We can have brand new as possible. This is the pandemic in the mind. And so, he formed a committee, and I'm very fortunate to be the chairman of this committee. But the most of the work in this committee is done by the committee members. I'm going to tell about them a little bit. Dr. Sajan Keturvedi also ensured that we get, you know, the remarks or, or the things that I think that our chairman is going there. He writes the conversation notes as well as Dr. Sami Chakotra. So they are all doing it. And his personal message. And we got all the decisions done. So, thank you very much. We wanted this event to reflect on Professor John's contribution to the India's Coconut and Christian program, formation of a state landmark event in the country for the landmark. Basic plasma sciences and DRSS. So we approached four speakers who are you know, already established in the in the usual domain. Dr. Sushil Deshpande, Dr. Jasudin Nema, Dr. Sambaram Bahadi, and Dr. Devi Ravi Kumar to give talks about starting this four topics. 
organizational committee said that these are the four major areas of karma time and material where it was set down for the committee. There may be various other areas.
because they will be bigger. Luckily, not many people. However, it looks very simple and elegant because of the tireless effort by the organizers and the members comprising of Dr. Yogi Ravi Kumar, Dr. Professor Joseph, Nirav Jarna Parag, Dr. Santanu Dharjari, Sudhati Chaya Chawla, Dr. Saroj Das, and Dr. Govind Lokan. Staff at IPR Administration, Director's Office, and Computer Center, they are at the back side. They have helped us tremendously. They have a leader. We are grateful to all of you. Thank you, all the participants, all the speakers, those who have joined from India and abroad, and especially Professor John and Neelu Madam. Thank you very much. As somebody said, we celebrate you know, your 90th birthday and of course your 100th birthday. We'll be very happy to be there. Thank you very much, sir.
Thanks everybody. Thanks, Professor John.